All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. We're still having the avocado discussion and we've been told by someone online that we say varieties of avocados, not types. That's Olo Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah, bring up your right. questions. We have, a, we have a lot of SMSs and tweets coming through. Let's start with the first one. Most countries in Europe started rejecting the Kenyan avocados due to challenges like fruit shape. Now we face China. Is this being addressed and how? Nixon, that comes directly to Madame Esther. Okay, first, let me clarify, it's, uh, it's not fruit shape. Sometimes people harvest the mature avocado and send to Europe. Okay. Then uh, when it ripens, it doesn't ripen it properly or out. it is uh, brown inside or something like that. Mm. So whenever you are marketing something, think about the customer. What is the customer going to get out of it? The other challenge we have is the pests and diseases. Yeah. Like the, there are some moths and uh, those fruit flies and others that attack the avocado and sometimes they may lay some eggs okay. Okay. that countries are afraid of them being taken to their country with the avocado. Okay. So, so is this being manage. addressed? How is it being addressed? Like Nixon was asking. What we are doing is to teach farmers yeah. to practice uh, good station. agronomic uh, practices in their orchards and also manage those fruits. Do you have to put in technology, uh, sorry, manage the fruit fries and the okay. other pests. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. right. Let's bring let's, up another question. That's right. Let's put yeah. that up on the screen now. Yeah. We have um, the next bit of feedback. So America, Kenya had uh, several questions. Does, do avocados burn excess fat? Do they stimulate pimples on the faces? And also, what's the reality when it comes to ladies' hair growth? Jose, you can come and give us your thoughts on this. Excess fat? Pimples, hair growth. Well, this is what I'd like to say that uh, avocado is a healthy fruit. In fact, we want to encourage every Kenyan to take an avocado. At the very least, two avocados a week, because then that two will, avocados a week. at least, so that that will you know, also improve the incomes of the farmers. Having said that, <laughs> now, avocado is used for various uh, you know, ways uh, in the world. Uh, we get um, cosmetics done from avocados. Avocado has folic acid. So that is why somebody's talking about, uh, you know, hair and so on. So basically, it's good when you consume avocado. Yes, the folic acid from avocado and many other, you know, um, uh, things that are found in avocado are useful for our health. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's bring in the other question that was on Twitter and 224222 is the SMS line we're using. And we have Edward Taitataveta. I'm aspiring to try avocado exporting. What are the requirements as regards to licenses? Mr. Bewad, that is directly to you. Yes, I think um, the farmer can actually approach HCD. First of all, we will encourage farmers to work with FPIC because when they work with F F F FPIC private sector, they get to be you know, trained and uh, capacity built on some of these things. But HCD, of course, KFIS is there. Yeah. And then we have Kenya Revenue Authority. If you are selling to a regional economic block like uh, ESE, there is what is called preferential certificate of origin and also chamber of commerce uh, for the ordinary certificates of origin uh, to other destinations which are not necessarily regional uh, economic blocks. And farmers can access some of these bodies. Let me see can actually, that, can that for the farmer. Yeah. 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 Uh, for the farmer who wants to export, uh, first of all, it's very difficult unless you're a large scale farmer to get the enough volumes. Yeah. So you, as uh, p many people have enc encouraged the farmers to get into cooperatives. Yeah. But now, if you want to be an exporter yourself, you have enough volumes. You only what volumes are we looking at here? Uh, whatever your customer is demanding. Yeah. <laughs> so and you think no, it, no it makes standard, business sense. There's no standard capacity. No, no. Okay. And it makes business sense. Okay, we'll you. give you a chance to add to that. My uh, so yes. what you need to do is uh, to register with HCD and then come to cafes for certification. From there, when you're registering, you'll be advised. When you come to us, we'll tell you the requirements that you need to meet that may vary from market market so whatever you need to be very clear which market do you want to export to mm -hmm. and then from there we shall advise you on what to do with that market or you can talk to your customer to tell you the requirements of their market then come to cafes for certification but you need to be registered with ACD and you need to be certified by cafes Fair for enough. you to export that's it. definitely that's a, a lot, a lot yeah. clearer yeah. let's take yeah. a look at the next SMS right now Thank you for your feedback. Someone here asking about avocado production, talking about excess water and the dangers, increasing chances of phytophthora. I'll allow Mina to get into this. There's the issue of water and harvest as well. Mina, your thoughts? Uh, first, uh, we say that avocados need water, like all crops, but we don't need excess water because when you get excess water, 
then you create a water logging and then the roots are not able to breathe, you get root diseases and the tree dies. So normally when it comes to irrigation, we talk about minimum 30 liters per tree per week. Okay. Minimum 30 liters. That is only when it's not raining. And in Kenya we have four months when it doesn't rain, January to March and September. And this time we had an extra month of April dimming. So 25 mm probably will be excess. So that is regarding to that. And then of course you need to make sure that uh, you are working in a soil which is well aerated, it has been prepared well, it has some manure, and you'll be able to, to grow. Avocado is not a difficult crop to grow. How long before harvest? It takes three years after planting before you start harvest. But three we also years. Three, three years. Yes. My three years. goodness. And we're also finding that when you do proper irrigation, you can start harvesting in two and a half years. But we tell farmers three years. And then you harvest for about 20, 25 years. All right. Depending with how you take And you can rate. harvest every year after e the three e years? Every year Sorry. after the three years for 20, 25 years. Okay. And um, <laughs> Madam Esther, there's another question here for you. Jefferson Mwangemi mm -hmm. says, please ask Madam, why do CAFIS impose charges, e.g. per DMs, when visiting farmers and yet they are allocated cash for their operations by the government? Actually, mo it's uh, more than three quarters of our revenue actually comes from the charges. Yeah. And so when we charge, we charge on minimal cost recovery charges. Yes. All right. I and to was there, there was another question from someone here on Twitter who was wondering uh, if this is another quill project. Um, yeah, I'll explain that. <laughs> but let me just touch quickly on the market. Someone asked what volume is adequate. We have to remember that Kenyan avocados 90% go through by sea. Yeah. which means we ship them through containers. One container takes 20 tons net. That is roughly 100,000 fruits. An average tree will give you at best maybe 400 fruits. So for you to fill a container, you can work the figures. And a customer says, I want say three, four containers a month. So for a small farmer to be able to gather volume is difficult. So the idea is that farmers, should, small scale farmers should pull together as cooperatives and then they can raise the volumes. That way it will be easier now for them, even as a cooperative, to consider whether they can export, if they can fulfill the requirements that uh, he has listed there. Now, um, the other thing about whether avocado is a quail business. Get quick. Rich and rich yes. quick yes. skin. <laughs> if you notice, one of the characteristics of get rich quick schemes mm. is that it's very quick money. You are told you invest 10,000, you get after two weeks mm. 3,000. Avocado is a three year crop. Three year crop. So, yes, you have to have the patience. And most of these uh, pyramid schemes do not have three years. But purely <laughs> from a professional and commercial point of view, if whatever product you are growing, you are consuming yourself, and it has an export component consumption then it's not going to be quail business. Third, Kenya has been exporting avocados from the 60s. Only what has happened, the volumes are growing. In Kenya today, you'll be surprised. The consumption for avocados in our country, domestic consumption, is growing rapidly. In 1998, when I joined the industry, after packing, the EU has given quality specifications. For example, just to use a quick example, if this stock is off, that's a reject because there will be infection coming through. But nutritional wise, the fruit is sound. So all these fruits you would reject either because of that or some pests or some other weights. We'll go put them in a truck and dump in the Dora dump site. But by 2004, we started seeing Mama Boga coming to us. Can we buy the rejects? That time there was only Uchumi supermarket doing a very small chaff. Mm. Over time, today, before you pack, there are people coming to ask, can we order? And that is, wow. what you, that is what you're consuming. Mm -hmm. yes. You go to fruits and vegetable shops today, people mm -hmm. are buying the same avocado at 50 shillings. Bef from throwing mm -hmm. to a local component which is growing. And we expect that it will continue growing because the health benefits are so good for the avocado yeah. that <coughs> we need to encourage Kenyans to eat and eat it a lot. To eat and eat it a lot. There was, there was, there was another yes. question on markets which I wanted to respond to. Okay, go ahead. The question of counties coming in. Uh, in the contracts between uh, you know cooperatives and uh, the, the, the the exporters, there was a question I was asked in Embu about um, you know uh, payments because a lot of suppliers mm -hmm. uh, talk about uh, a fact that um, those who buy from them uh, do not pay on time. Uh, so that's another question that needs to be looked at, and I think when counties come to guarantee and work with their cooperatives as they supply the avocado, they will be able to look at the issue of pricing and uh, prompt payments. 
uh, around uh, the smallholder farmers. And then another thing which we need to talk about is that how long can Kenya export uh, fresh avocados? I think we need, what we are doing currently is to see how we can bring technology and start adding value. And then we have high value products to be exported because that way, the country will like actually live. What are the possible uh, products you can get from avocado juices? What of course, else? juices, of course, uh, uh, avocado oil. Lotion, oil. lotion, oil. Lotion. lotion. The lady talked about the hair. Yeah. Okay. I can that's the lotion. Uh, I mean, uh, soaps. soaps. Soaps, okay. So, this is the, the, the long term uh, within the big four uh, in terms of value addition because that's how Kenya can actually uh, get a lot of value out of our products. Was there a quick question to you? A concern that in the next five years there'll be a string of rich avocado millionaires in the cities? and poor farmers in the counties? Mm. Well, uh, it, it's, it, it's not true. I mean, uh, yeah. for well, now, to to for now, the middlemen are there. We, we call them suppliers. And uh, a number of uh, exporters <laughs> get <laughs> the avocado from their suppliers. But over time, as we have said, if the smallholder farmers in the counties get into cooperatives and get organized, then the exporters will work directly with them because they will have the consistency, they will have the volumes, and so they will be able to do business directly. Now, it's not that there will be a few rich uh, people in the cities. I mean, we need to understand the value chain of avocado. There is somebody who's got to grow the avocado. There is some logistic company that has got to transport the avocado to either the port of Mombasa or to the airport in Nairobi. And there is a clearing agent that has to clear the avocado. And there is an importer on the other side who has to import the avocado. So a farmer is not going to do everything. And there is government that is going to do the you know, regulations and certifications. Having said that, um, the future of avocado is bright. But we also need to understand that uh, the rest of the countries are not sitting on their laurels waiting for Kenya to grow the avocado. I mean, South Africa is increasing. There is Mexico. There is Peru. There is Guatemala. California grows a lot of avocado. And other countries, Israel grows avocado. Those are our competitors. So we, what we need in this country is to be able to have a competitive edge against them. And um, speaking on behalf of exporters, I mean, the government of Kenya has put VAT on agrochemicals. That increases the cost of production. The government of Kenya is not paying VAT to the exporters on time. That means mm. they don't have uh, money for, for doing their business. Mm. And every other day, the government of Kenya has now come up with the horticulture crops regulation 2019. It's in draft form. I have seen it, and they're talking about charging 0.25% FOB, free on board, of the exports. I mean, where are the business people going to get the money to get into all this? We are basically looking at a good crop, but then we are getting steps back in terms of Heavy making us competitive to be so able forth. to get into the export market. Okay. Mm -hmm. then, uh, then also if the farmers really want to benefit from farming, you don't plant one or two or three trees and expect those ones will make you a millionaire. Mm -hmm. If you have a piece of land, uh, plant uh, from one acre up so yeah. that you can get good money out of it. So at least a minimum of yeah. what, 10 trees, 13? A quarter acre if quarter. you really want some I, Ideally, yeah. you yeah. can do an acre. But an in acre. Kenya mm. today, we know that land in rural areas is it's probably really less yeah. than that. Mm. So whatever you can be able to plant, even if it's 10 or 15, but as so long as in the neighborhood you can do that, it's very easy to create a catchment. Mm. But I think the most important thing that we need to talk to aspiring and our people who are growing avocados is actually about the yields. Because what, I, what is happening today, I, 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 was, I was doing some research, and you find that on average many farmers are doing 200 fruits a tree per year. Mm -hmm. Yet the same tree can give you 1,000, 2,000 fruits a tree a year. A year. Wow. Yes. So, so in terms of, uh, in ter it, not a half. One in a quarter. So exactly. So the, the point is, what is the disconnect? If I give an example, my orchard, I'm able to average 1,000 fruits a year. When the year is not tree. per tree, um, I do 800. The only difference between me and the guys who are doing 200 or 150 is because I've got the technical know-how to implement what you call good agricultural practices. Oh, yes. And this country, knowing that the land is getting smaller and smaller because of our cultural uh, ways of you know, uh, subdividing land to give children and housing and all that, the only way out is to increase the yields per unit without necessarily increasing the cost of growing. Okay. And that is the only way. A farmer will say, I have 10 trees, but I'm making money which is decent. 
And I think that is where we have a big disconnect because everybody continues planting like the governors have given millions of trees. Yeah. How much are we going to get from each tree? Mm. 200 at most. So, or even less. Or even less. less. So, and okay. I think that is one thing we really need to focus on so that we increase the yields, we get the quality right, we get everything right, and then internationally, don't forget, Kenya is not the only exporter. If you go to Europe today, Kenyan avocados are rated very lowly because of our quality issues. But when we step it up, we'll even have an opportunity to ask for better prices. Mm. So we have got some work to do so that we can move the industry productively, yeah. uh, competitively from a commercial perspective, and also even from a food safety and compliance point of view. I'm sure okay. she wants to respond to this. Madam Kiona, before you come in, um, are there other markets around the world that are interested in Kenyan avocados and also are there markets around the world interested in other Kenyan products that you are dis in discussions with right now? Yes, actually Kenya is a major exporter of agriculture produce with hot kasha leading. Um, we are exporting to Europe, to Middle East, uh, Russia, even Australia for flowers, Korea, all these, we are trying to access for the avocado some of those markets that okay. we haven't exported in the past uh, last year we cleared for south africa we had banned also our, our <laughs> <laughs> for our export but now we can export uh, mauritius also we have just uh, they have just given us the requirements though they are a bit stringent so we are trying to negotiate whether they can lower them a bit as long as we meet we address the, the risks they are trying to mitigate um china we have just opened but uh, the, we, uh, at the moment, we can't be able to export the whole fruit. Yeah. It has to be ripened, frozen, and then exported as a frozen product. Mm. And CAFIS will certify that the, we are meeting the requirements. So anybody wanting to invest in that yeah. will have to come to us. Uh, we shall give them the specification on what they need in terms of hygiene and uh, handling that uh, product. And then they will be we will inform the Chinese that we have a client here who is ready, mm -hmm. and then they will be able to... Uh, 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 allow me to add something. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's good to talk about, you know, exporting frozen avocado to, 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 to China. Yeah. But honestly, the exporters are here. What we export are fresh avocado. I, I only know of one exporter who tried to do frozen avocados. What we need from government is to facilitate private sector to start with what we have, which is the fresh avocado. And it's nice to talk about Mauritius. I mean, the president went to Mauritius and convinced the, 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 the government there that we can export. But we are looking at a country that has 1.2 million people. China's 1.3 million people. I mean, I mean uh, <laughs> Japan, <laughs> Japan has 125 million people. Yeah. What we need from government is, and, and Peter is here, can, can, can talk about it, is to, to get facilitation from government to enter the, the traditional markets that we've been, to ensure that we stick there and get new markets for our produce. And not only avocado, I mean, we are not able to export French beans, for example, to the USA because of the pest that uh, they are saying, fruit fly, you know, attacks uh, this. And we, we are looking up to CAFIS to do what they need to do, which is a pest critic analysis, so that they can convince the Americans that we can export our French bean while it is whole. Yeah. I think this Be question what? of, I think this question, the question of avocado, actually, I'm happy that we are introducing other products, was um, a call on Kenyans to diversify products. So we are looking at avocado, among others. But there is also an urgent need by, uh, you know, our Kenyan private sector to start investing, especially taking advantage of the big four agenda, to invest in value addition in a lot of our products. And then we, need, we are not only looking at uh, China. So the question of issues on frozen avocado does not arise because already as a country, we are looking at Asia. In fact, the African <coughs> continental free trade area has become operational. It is being launched in May. That's right. In end of, uh, end of uh, during the end of this month. Yes. So we are looking at Africa. Especially Africa now takes a lot of our manufactured or value added products. So we need to think about how can we add value to our tea and sell to maybe Nigeria or we sell to South Africa and other African countries. And, and also, look at Agoa, which is duty-free up, up to 2025, and they are taking our dried and fresh avocados, as well as also the EU. So we need to really diversify our products and markets. And what we need to focus on is value addition. In fact, the economic uh, uh, history has shown that uh, countries which export raw materials do not actually uh, reap no, a lot no from, from trade. Those are classified as poor countries. But if you go to high-end value-added products, 
these are countries which are increasingly getting, you know, increasing returns, creating employment. So while others give us an opportunity to export frozen, we are exporting value-added products to Africa, we export to the U.S. market and others. And I think, I think the government has done a lot in terms of um, okay. uh, opening these markets. Opening these markets. Our time really okay. is up. I'll give you one minute to, yes. to, to say the last word. Yes. Andy, go ahead. Yes, I just wanted to demystify the issue about pests. Pests are controlled at the farm level. Risk analysis is made and you're told which pests do you need to control. So the private sector needs to understand these things, set up structures at the farm level and manage the pests that are preventing us from accessing the market. He has challenged your organization, markets in the USA and so forth. Are you working on those? Uh, we have worked on them. You've worked on them. Actually, together. what okay. they need yeah. to do. Most of the markets now are re requiring pest-free areas of production, even for the Chinese, for the export of the fruit. We need to put uh, management, good agriculture practices at the farm level, because people are used to just collecting anything from anywhere. The farms need to be managed properly. The pests in those farms need to be managed properly so that you get products that are not carrying pests on them. And we, as Kefis, we are ready to train them. It's not us to go and control, it's the farmer. <laughs> <laughs> it is the farmer. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can see how we'll go back and forth. And maybe this is what we'll talk about next time yeah. Yeah. when okay. we call each of you here. Thank you so yes. much to each of our guests who joined us today. And yes. to who's participated in this program, I'm told we have about four tweets and one SMS. Let's quickly go through them before we release our guests here today. Just as Matumbi says, I've not heard the panel talk about where to get recommended varieties in counties, market linkages, established avocado contacts in countries. Can you address in these? Oh, in but countries. In, in counties. Oh, but that, oh, okay. all that was all that was addressed. I think all that was addressed, yes. Just yes, it was. Late. And uh, Madame Esther is saying contact Kefis. Contact Kefis. Yes, okay. you okay. get everything At there. Toe, Clive says, there was a time I worked on avocado processing industry before they were being exported. We have one factory in Tika that used to wash and pro process them. It used to be flooded because it was single. We have other processing industries. So I think talking about a lot of demand. Oh, yes. 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 Can we give one word, one line answers for those I words? Can, I, I yes. want to say something. Uh, okay. We have, we Go ahead. Have, we have yeah. Yeah. Can I? Okay. We, we do have uh, at least four companies currently which are processing avocado oil. Yeah. And uh, that is really helping in the uptake of the fruits. But what I would want to tell um, our viewers and those people who are listening to us, I want to tell them the opportunities in agribusiness. The opportunities in avocado growing. The opportunities in the avocado value. Okay. Yeah. But okay. they need to do it right okay. okay and those farmers out there who are struggling for the market they can actually get in touch with me we can see how we can work with them to help them build capacity so that we can be able to work with them all right let's read the rest of the sms's and tweets coming through really quick there's still one more and he says i'm praying hard to hear them talk of avocados production using technology let them talk of price per kg. I think uh, mine already spoke own. about yes. that, yes. how you yes. can move production from 200 avocados per tree yes. to over 1,000 per year. And we have Humphrey. Humphrey O says, hope with time the production of avocados won't be an issue of cartels because we understand how things happen in our country. We're looking forward to this avocado production to change the face of farmers, give them a reason to invest so much in it. Three okay. years, Humphrey, remember. Three yes. years if you're to invest right now. Just BT, create an avocado oil processing plant, diversify. Exports shouldn't be the only goal. The country can produce avocado oil, which can be locally and internationally sold, creating more jobs. Think big. All right. Okay, yep. That's how we wrap up this discussion. <laughs> you have one word. The aim, of a country, the aim of any country which is growing is to enhance exports. When you fix your exports, of course, locally, you would have already fixed because you'll be producing internationally accepted products or yes. products of high quality. Okay. So no country in, in the world aims to grow products for local market. You aim Thank you. High and then you achieve the, the local Thank market. Thank you. We'll take that as the last one for this uh, <laughs> discussion. Peter B. Watt, CEO Export Promotion Council, Asante Sana. We had Esther Kimani, the MD of the Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate <laughs> Services. Thank you for joining us for this program today. Josea Machuki, the CEO of Fresh Produce Exporters Association of Kenya, Asante Sana, and Maina Karoiru, the ag an agribusiness consultant, an avocado exporter who has graciously brought some of his products here today just for us to understand a little bit more about this food. Next time, we're going to have all the different varieties, fuete, has, you name it. Yeah. We'll pile them up on this table and help you understand a bit more about that. And that's why you need to keep watching Bulls and Bears. They're over 150, so we might not fit all of them. Let's do six. We'll see. Yeah, six. We'll do a Conservative. Six. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but most important, thank you so much for your feedback and all the questions. That's where we wrap it up. But from eating 
to working out. That's what Zinzi Kibiki is doing talking about right eating. Okay. We're not eating this? I, no? I don't know. Are they ripe? Okay. All right, right. Are they ripe, by the way? They are These not. ones are not ripe. Because there's, there's, one that is said, there's one that is said is uh, can be ripe and it's still green. That's Fuete. <laughs> We can wait that long, we'll just put them over here at the corner. <laughs> take a photo. We'll take a photo after this, after the break, and uh, work out Zinzi Kibiku. Uh, Zinzi, you'll have to wait for a week to eat this, so please yeah. go and work out. Start working out in advance. We are waiting for that on the other side of this break. <laughs>